Um, anyways, on to something that got a lot of engagement on our page. And I think people were mad at us from what I could read from the comments. Uh, mad at me, at least. Yeah. Um, somebody else was mad at you, too. Yo, yeah. So I got... I, yo, I did not know what I said would... I didn't even know the conversation was going to even get rubbed people the wrong way. To be honest, I don't I, feel like people listen to the whole clip. Because when I'm reading the comments, everyone's like, how do you not understand what he was saying? He said what he said. And I'm like, bro, I fully said afterwards they should have kept him on regardless. Like, why are you guys being so fucking... And I didn't know people cared this much about this whole McCannon thing. I did not know either. Yeah. It seems... it's Right now, it seems like it's like some type of race uh, divi- division yeah. between like yeah, the that's what Jewish I'm and now. the Blacks. And but right now, even on our YouTube page, especially there, someone wrote a long. Oh shit! I didn't read. see that. They 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 did a read on me. They called me a, a black protector of the white of the non-black OC. I, I feel like, like someone else called you that too before. When we talked about yes, Jules. Did someone call me that, or was it me? Oh, hey, man. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking, but I want uh, to see that comment. That's crazy. Let me yeah, see. so I had I replied to that, but I was like, so. All right, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start when in this conversation? Um, you want to start on the post. You want to talk, or you want to get back into the updates of what is going on with Neat Cannon? Get back, get into the updates of it first. Okay. Got some juicy watermelon in my mouth. Pause. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, that's not going to go with right with the whole. Yeah, I came. Yeah, no. Yeah, I came with the closet earlier on the podcast, and then to hear this is like, yo, bro, this man's trying to send out signals. Blink twice if you. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyways, updates. Okay, so since our last podcast, uh, that last week when we were recording, he had teased a clip that he's going to be sitting down with a rabbi. I forget his mm-hmm. name, a rabbi Abraham, I think it was. This. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't recall his name, but I do remember yeah. this. Yeah. So he had teased that. And then the following day, I believe he dropped uh, the Kenan's class with the rabbi. I watched it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was entertained by it. I think it was a, it was a good, well done sit down. Uh, Nick Cannon apologized for what he said. And uh, he thought, that, or this sit down would you know, better educate himself on the culture and the plight of the Jewish people, as well as bring that message on to other people uh, that may not know too much about the plight of the Jewish community. Mm-hmm. And we're able to get like a really good insight. Uh, but it, like, I, like it goes back to what I said last week. Why would he say that? Like, why would you, why would you want to go down that path in terms of just putting out that hateful rhetoric? Yeah. You know, uh, I, I remember seeing this other podcast. I was no uh, other show by star. And it's like, it just seemed like Nick Cannon just wanted to be that black guy that was quote unquote down with the, the whole, you know, thing. But it didn't, I feel it, like it backfired. I feel like the people who were commenting on our post as well were also kind of like trying to spew that similar rhetoric. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I feel like yes. that's why they were mad at us. Yes. And my thing is, I've been talking to black people. No, I, I, I'm lying. But uh, <laughs> I'm lying. Uh, I haven't really had that much we're conversation. Call you the black protector for white people now. For Yo, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna call me a coon, and I have not said anything coonish. I don't think. Uh, no, you're, but, not uh, you're not a coon. But so I who have I, I swear I've talked to maybe like two two people so far okay. in terms of with the whole Nick Cannon thing. Just because it doesn't seem like to be much of a conversation amongst my everyday friends, right? Yeah, mine neither so, at all. And I, I, I don't know. So yeah. these two girls that I was talking to, I had gone back and forth with the whole Nick Cannon conversation. And I was like, he was just spewing a lot of, uh, you know, hateful rhetoric, mm-hmm. uh, propaganda, things that weren't true. And he really backpedaled a lot of that rhetoric that he was saying. It was like, it's, it was basically like just words that he got from someone else and he just re- regurgitated them for a mass people. Not, not having any... Um, First, not being in front of someone that could really debate him yeah. and question him on what he was saying so he could have some more information to back it up. And second, uh, these were, were in his own words. He didn't do research himself. Mm-hmm. So he, he was in front of Progressive Risk, who was... Uh, Who's already with that same mentality, yeah. So why, he would more so feed into Nick Cannon's mentality yeah. and egg him on and add some more points to it, right? That's what it is. And uh, 
from what I was trying to tell people, I was like, a lot of people, a lot of black people, or maybe a lot of, you know, other people as well, they often agree when people say certain things about the Jewish community. Let's just talk, let's just talk about the Jewish community right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, no disrespect, just case study. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when people are talking about the Jewish community, they often say that they control the banking systems, uh, they have power over, you know, the media and other things, and they're able to get you fired from your job. So these are the type of rhetoric that often goes around about the Jewish community, which uh, I don't necessarily think is necessarily true. There might be Jewish uh, Jewish member, or members of the Jewish community in high positions, but uh, the Jewish community have certain things set in place, like the Anti-Defamation League and uh, the Museum of Tolerance. Mm-hmm. And the Anti-Defamation League, they're able to push a lot of buttons and, uh, you know, make sure that what make sure their voices are heard loud enough in terms that they're able to get responsibility or accountability from that person who has slighted their community you know that's the reality of it but people heighten up the same the same things of the jewish community the same way hitler has mm-hmm. and or not to say it's the same way hitler has but in the same propaganda rhetoric that hitler did to get the germans to Just look at them. Mm-hmm. to look at the Jewish people in a, in, in a very slighted way and also build up, you know, the concentration camps that could lead to it. So when people put out that type of rhetoric, I hope I'm not trying to be so long winded, but when people put out that type of rhetoric, it, it builds up that same type of animosity towards yeah. that community, you know, which can be really detrimental, mm-hmm. you know? So that's why oftentimes when, when people say, Hey, the, the Jewish people have the power to get you stuff like that. It really seems as offensive because you're, you're drumming up a lot of animosity and a lot of em- a jealousy and anger towards a particular community because you feel like they have more power over you and, and you're limited. Now I get it. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't see anything wrong with saying they have the power and stuff, but now I get it because it's like, you're making it seem as though, they have the power to fix things or, or something like that. Yeah. I understand now. Yeah. So that right there, that type of stuff that Nick Cannon was saying inside the, and also he also said that the Jewish people are, are we black people are the original Jews, the original Jews, which I didn't get all, that. Yeah. So which it's something that it's been, it's a rhetoric that's been going on for some years now. And mm-hmm. I've, I've heard it a lot myself and uh even even like tribes in even like a tribe in nigeria the Igbos, uh mm-hmm. my tribe some of them believe that they were the the lost tribe that ended up migrating and bec- and those ones are believed that they're jewish right yeah and people have some type of notion that a lot of people are the original jewish people and if this is true i'm not saying that it is or is if it's true i don't believe all black people would be jewish i think that's a nasty rhetoric to even put out there and it's 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 a misleading rhetoric as well. Mm-hmm. Although that's why you could see why he apologized because it's not it's not it can't be true. Because the people that were I'm going deep. Yeah. I don't want to go too deep. <laughs> but we're, if we're talking about the transatlantic slave trade, a lot yeah. of the a lot of the uh, people that a lot of the black people that were taken into slave trade came from the west coast of Africa, right? You telling me I don't believe all all those people, and they all came from different tribes, right? Or different yeah. ethnic groups and, and cultures. You tell me all of them so happen to be, you know, Jewish? Yeah. And then push it, it doesn't make any sense. And that's another thing that a lot of people have some type of rhetoric about. It's like a lot of things are, a lot of things have been told to people by people with conviction in their voice when they said it. And so, so it seems like it's true automatically without you having exactly, to it. Exactly. And so that's why a lot of people might sound, find, might find what we say or not what we say when I go about it or I say this, not this, that, and the third may not be true. The same way how last week, I think how he said, um, white people are inherently savage because they lack melanin deficiency, yeah. you know? And I was going to say something different. I was going to say something deeper back then. I was like, if white pe- if, if, if all life started in, in Africa, right. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that mean the African is the original savage. Right. And I probably, this is not the conversation probably had to have with you. <laughs> this is probably not the conversation that you even started but like i might i might redact that <laughs> so, okay, but but my whole thing is where did the savage narrative come from in the first place what was he getting at with that uh he he there's a lot of there's a lot of um 
uh, propaganda that people want to say about white people and their inherent sad or not to say inherent but the acts that they have committed and treason and injustice they committed towards black people over the years okay they're, they're saying that because okay. they left africa uh they lost their melanin and the and the lack of melanin caused them oh. to become more tribal and and, and and primal and stuff like that and okay melanin- so then no, I would agree with Nick Cannon on if we were supposed to agree with one of those statements, either yours or Nick Cannon's, I think I would agree with his. Because I feel like what he's trying to say is like losing the melanin, like the melanin is what keeps you sane, if you will. And then mm. losing it makes you psycho. That's what mm. I look at as. Mm. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna co-sign that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> That's what I would interpret from it though. You know, yeah, this is like week three you've been going crazy, man. No, week four now. <laughs> Or you out here going ten toes down? I respect it, you know. Yeah, stand on it. Oh so, yeah, but the the whole the whole conversation with Nick Cannon and the rabbi was a really good conversation. Uh, I think that he did his part, and at the end of it, the Jewish person, and at the end of it, the Jewish man was like, uh, or Nick Cannon was like, man, I got a lot of flack from the Jewish community, and I got a lot of flack from my community. My community wanted to cancel me because I apologize, but yeah, I do feel I do feel like. The, I don't. A lot of people haven't seen the full conversation of him talking. Yeah, about no, I, I, I haven't. I think you're yeah. the only person I know who has. Yeah, they have, they have, and they've seen the same clip of him talking about the white people being savage, and they think that even they're even putting out false n- narratives about how uh, Nick Cannon said something about white people, and he got fired in like 48 hours. Yeah, it's and just- then they still haven't arrested the cops that killed Breonna Taylor, and it's. And that's not the case. And I, I think, see right there, that's propaganda. Yeah, it's just so much, um, like, without context, basically, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Is like, I feel like what's happening with yeah. this. But, yeah. Yeah. But I can say I like Nick. I, I At the end of it, I think last week I said I liked him. I like Nick. I just, I was really, I was really teased at the fact that he went 10 toes down on some shit that a college-educated man should have known better. Yeah, well, we all make mistakes. So, yeah. Anyways, you, uh, you think that the, you think the label of anti Semitic is gonna uh, hinder him for the rest of his career? Uh, that's, that's I don't a, know. That's a, that's a bad label to have on you. I don't know. You know, I feel like no. no? I don't see this sticking. Okay. All right then. It yeah. Might be good. I don't know. I'm good with my intuition. Okay. You wanted to uh, so I mean, there's a whole bunch of other anti Semitic stuff like here, like uh, you know about uh, Wiley. Yes, I saw that he got yeah. dropped. Yeah. Got dropped from management. He went on like some Twitter rants. So talking. he was doing pretty big things, though, I would say. Yep. And like, I guess this is a good example. Well, not really good. It's not the same thing. Racism and rape are not the same thing. Um, but it, it's kind of like that whole scale I was talking about in terms of where you are in your career with labels dropping you and stuff. Yep. Um, I have to open what exactly he said again because I saw it, but I forgot exactly what he said. He's basically took up the mantle of whatever Nick Cannon said. Yeah. And ran with it. Oh, yeah. Rednecks are the KKK and Jewish people are the law. Work mm-hmm. that out. So basically, he's saying Jewish people could stop the KKK from killing people, but they're not. I understand. I get it. Um, yeah, he got dropped for that. I, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's a, yeah, you can't. It's the same. For me, it's funny because it's the same thing as saying, like, not all brown people are terrorists. Like mm-hmm. we had, like brown. Hold on, um, Nina. That's quick. I want you to. When people say brown, it depends on what where you at. When you say brown, if I'm in yeah. LA, I'm uh, when I say brown, I mean Mexican. When I'm yeah, over in yeah, Brampton, when I say brown, I mean Indian. Someone yeah. else might be brown. It might be Middle Eastern. So yeah, what does wait, it mean when I say it? Yeah. Um, I am referring to yeah, Indian and Middle Eastern and mm-hmm. anything that's but like countries that actually have brown people so like i don't think turkish people they're not very brown in their skin they're mm-hmm. i know a couple of turkish people and they're very very they're pretty much white they look white mm-hmm. so like i'm not referring to them but i'm referring to yeah like indians tamils um uh pakistanis like all those is pretty much what i'm referring to um but yeah to me it's like the similar thing as saying so saying all jewish people have power is the same thing as saying all brown people are terrorists or the same thing as saying um i don't know all like like 
every black person is going to rob you or like, mm-hmm. you know, like those similar stereotypes that have been like a thing throughout society. Like, that's what I feel like this is kind of like doing is the same thing. In it's my bringing opinion. a lot of division, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, not to say, what I'm going to say is that people are going to talk regardless, mm-hmm. but I do feel what we're talking about is only leading us to a place that we really don't want to be. Yeah, I think this is going to make things a lot worse. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If this actually turns into like a real big thing, it's going to make it a lot, lot, lot worse. Yeah. It's going to be like three race wars in one. Exactly. It's a matter of time before the rest of them get thrown into the mix. Yeah. And it, it really doesn't make any sense. Like, why, why are people taking an issue over something like that? And why they also said that uh, if you go against the, the Jewish politics inside your job, you'll, you'll lose your job and stuff like that. And then uh, he got kicked off of social media. And then he said the police officers came to his house. Yeah, I don't understand why police came to his house. Or is because yeah. they're saying they're mostly authorities? I don't... Yeah. Now this all makes sense to me. So... Yeah, and what what we're seeing right now is this is this is a very bad time to be in for some like we went from protesting against injustice, well, inju- police injustices against black people, yeah. and everyone and everyone in the world seems to be kumbaya, yeah, yeah, like yo, let's let's fix this. To Nick Cannon's something that he probably really didn't mean any malice by just mm-hmm. miseducation and and, and, and terrible. And, and terrible understanding of the English language and yeah. putting some out, something out there. It started up a snowball effect to where it's like, nah, nah, he, he was saying something. Why'd you fire him? He was saying something. Mm-hmm. Now everyone wants to, you know, do the whole, you ever watch Queen and King or King and Queen? No. Or Queen, Queen and Slim? No, I did not. All right. So it. it's kind of like that was that would effect. It's like now he, Nick Cannon's words have been immortalized in the minds of people who have some type of sliver of, agreements with him and saw the backlash he was getting mm-hmm. fired from his job. It was like, nah, fuck it. We go. I believe Nick Cannon. He, what he yeah. was saying was true. And now we have a, a snowball effect. You know, you plant, yeah. he planted a seed in the minds of people. Yeah. And now it's just unintentionally going. wanted to. Yeah, exactly. 